good and blessed morning. God bless the faithful. This is Sister Liberty and I back with another teaching. So this morning we are going to be talking about circumcising or circumcision. So we have been going over this in our local assembly about you know, the promises that God made Abraham and the covenant that God made with Abraham and how the Lord told Abraham that he must circumcise everyone in his household, including those that have been bought, um, those that have been born in his house. He must circumcise every single male in that household. And <clears throat> I think he said that those that are born in his house have to be circumcised by the eighth day. Let's go to Genesis 17. I believe that that's where he tells Abraham about the circumcising. Yes, Genesis 17, it says, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Lord, or I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I love how the Lord tells Abraham to be perfect. That means that he is going to equip Abraham to live this out, to, to become what he's speaking over him. He says, walk before me and be perfect. God is going to give Abraham everything that he needs to become perfect. And I will make my covenant between you and in or between me and you and will multiply your seed exceedingly and abram fell on his face and god talked with him saying as for me behold my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations neither shall my name any more be called or neither shall your name sorry be any more called abram but your name shall be abraham for a father of many nations have i made you and i will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. And I will establish my covenant, my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you in their generation, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto you and to your seed after you. And he says, and I will, where am I? And I will give unto you and to your seed after you the land wherein thou art a stranger in the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Okay, and verse 9 says, And God said unto Abram, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, and your seed after you and their generation. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every male child or every man child among you shall be circumcised. There has to be a cutting away. There has to be a cutting off. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. We're going to get into that. And it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generation, he that is born in your house, like I mentioned before, and bought with money of any stranger which is not of your seed. He that is born in your house and he that is bought with money must be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. The un, he says, the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So either we become the circumcised or we are the ones to be removed, to be cut off. So it seems as though God is making this covenant between all of those that are considered the circumcised of Abraham. If we are among those that are not the circumcised of Abraham, then we are not among the remnant that God is promising to bless and to have the covenant between and so the circumcising of the foreskin so we all know that circumcision is a very painful process it's not a fun process but the benefits are great the benefits are awesome so the cutting away of the foreskin it is supposed to make one sensitive so when a person in their private area has their foreskin removed it is supposed to make that area more sensitive it is a little weird to talk about it so weird because i've never been circumcised in that way but i do know how the process works i know how the process works i have two boys of my own 
And so I know how it, I know how it works. And so that process is a very uncomfortable process. It's a very painful, it depends. It depends on the age. It's better to be circumcised when you are younger, when you are a baby. It makes me think about how Solomon says it is better to serve the Lord in your youth when you are younger because the affects the process is a lot more smoother it's a lot more easier so that's what just came to my mind as i'm thinking about you know being circumcised as a child versus being circumcised at abraham's age 99 you know the pain is a lot more severe and painful when you get circumcised when you're older but the results are good The results are good. The cutting away of the foreskin is necessary, is necessary. If we are not considered the circumcised, then we are not considered a part of Abraham's seed. Everybody is not the seed of Abraham. We are the seeds of Abraham by faith. That's what the word of God tells us. We are his seeds. We are his descendants by faith through Jesus Christ. He made it possible for us to be the children of God, you know, through his blood. And so we thank God for that. We bless God for that. And so the circumcise is or the circumcision is necessary. It is necessary that 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 foreskin gets cut off so that that part can become more sensitive. That part has more exposure. When we circumcise our hearts, because again, there has to be a cutting away in order for me to be like God, in order for Abraham to be what God just spoke over him, the Lord told Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. In order for Abraham to take that on and become that, there has to be a cutting away. There has to be a circumcising of his heart. As the Lord is taking him through this whole process of the Lord promising him a child and there being a gap of 13 years, you have to understand that in that in that whole process, God was circumcising Abraham's heart. God was doing something in Abraham's heart. God was increasing his faith. God was increasing his understanding. God was working on the inside of him and really trying to make Abraham a great man of faith. But that takes patience. That takes diligence. That takes hope, you know. But his wife, we we see how Sarah, his wife, began to lose hope, to lose faith, to, you know, stop believing the promises of God because again she wasn't the one who God gave that promise to it was her husband and so she's going off of his words she's going off of his encounter and so at some point she gets tired of waiting or maybe she begins to think that well maybe this isn't what God meant maybe God meant this and so she convinces her husband to go into her handmaid Hagar and Abraham does and Hagar conceives and she bears a son and she calls and Abraham calls his name Ishmael, Ishmael. And so that was not the ultimate plan of God. That was not the way in which God wanted to bless Abraham. God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your seed. You will have seed. Sarah will get pregnant. I know she is past her childbearing age, but she will get pregnant. She will get pregnant. And so I believe that in that whole process, although, you know, Sarah and Abraham became, or Abram at the time became impatient, you know, they lost hope, you know, in those moments, God was doing a cutting away. God was doing a lot with Abraham. We have to, we have to understand that, you know, God had just called Abraham, you know, in the chapters before God had just called Abraham out of his country. He called Abraham out of a place where his family was, away from his kindreds, away from his comfort zone, away from his familiar zone, things that he grew up knowing, you know, the false religion he grew up in, people that he knew his whole life. God called him out of that. When God calls us out of the world, when God calls us out of a lifestyle of sin, there has to be a process that you and I have to undergo, especially if we have been in the world for a very long time however many years you know anything i don't know anything i don't know i don't even know where to draw the number i just 
I know that the longer you're out there, the harder it is to serve the Lord, the harder it is to be who God is wanting you to be. It's harder because over time, your heart becomes hard and your heart grows what is known as a callus. And so the quicker we surrender to God, the sooner we yield to God and we live for God, the easier it'll become. And so when God calls us out of a lifestyle of sin, we have to undergo a process. And sometimes that process isn't fun. That process isn't easy. It does not feel good. It's not comfortable. But the results are life changing and life altering. You become a better you. You become that perfect son of God that God is speaking over you and releasing over you. He's going to give you power to be perfect as he is perfect. He's going to give you power to be this change individual, this change individual, but you must undergo the process and you must be willing to undergo the process. Anyone who has to go through that process of being circumcised, they have to be willing and if they just can't defend for themselves, and that's that's a different story. You know, they're a baby and they have to go through the process. That's just different. But someone that's of age and knowing that they need this procedure done, they have to be willing. They have to be a willing participant to undergo this procedure. Man, I don't want to go through this procedure. This procedure is going to be painful. This procedure is going to be uncomfortable. But they have to make a decision. But it's worth it. It's worth it to remove this excessive skin there are things that we've picked up that we've taken on especially if you've been in the world pretty much your whole life let's say 18 years i've been in the world 18 years i've been in the world 25 years 30 years you know 34 years and i am now saved or i have a desire to serve the lord you have to understand that you've taken on a lot you've been through a lot you've taken on a lot You've experienced a lot. You know, you've seen a lot. Those are layers and layers in a build up of so much that you've put on, that you've taken on, you know, in the world. And so that's a process. That is a whole procedure for that to have to come off, for that to have to be cut away. God is going to cut away things that have become attached to you. That's what it is. That foreskin is attached to you. It is you. It's a part of you. You know, you're comfortable with it, but it needs to be removed. It needs to be cut off. If there is not a cutting off, then there will be another cutting off. God said that if this does not happen, if this procedure does not take place, then I'll have to cut you off. You will not be mine. I will not be able to identify you. I will not associate you with me because to be circumcised is to be like me, to be like me. I want to be able to identify you as myself when I see you and I see that this procedure has taken place. And so when the Lord calls for us to surrender our lives to him, we have to understand that there must be a cutting away. There must be a circumcising of the heart. He's going to cut away things that has been a part of you for so many years. You know, he may ask for you to, you know, get out of your country. He may ask for you to cut off your family. Like, hey, these people, I know you love them. I know you've known them your whole life, but I need you to separate yourself. It's a separating, being circumcised is a separating God is separating you from the part that is not good for you this part is not I know this part you identify as you as well but this part is not good for you this part needs to be cut off just like you was to cut off you know fat off of a piece of meat yes this part is a part of the meat this part is attached to the meat, but this part also needs to be cut off as well. It needs to be cut off of this part of the meat for the meat to be better, for the meat to, you know, be cleaner, be healthier. You got to remove the excess fat. You have to remove the foreskin of the heart. And so the Lord may require for you to begin to cut off some things, but it's for your good. And you have to be a willing participant. You have to participate in your process. You have to participate in your circumcising. And when you do, the results are miraculous. I'm telling you, you will become a better you. You'll begin to be who God has called you to be, you know, in a sudden moment, 
a sudden moment, things that you that you've struggled with for years, God can he can he can deliver you from it in a moment. As long as you're willing to undergo the process of the Lord doing this in your heart, I need to cut away the fear. I need to cut away the trauma. I need to cut away the unbelief. I need to cut away this part of you. I know that this part of you is connected to this part of that and of them and of these things over here. But there now needs to be a separation. There needs to be a distinction. There needs to be a cutting off. There needs to be a cutting off because a cutting off makes a better you. A cutting off makes, you know, you more malleable, you more shapeable when those things are now no longer in a way. It makes you more sensitive, just like physically when someone gets circumcised. That is to that is designed to make that individual more sensitive. You need more sensitivity to the spirit and the voice of God. When there are things in the way, it is harder for us to hear the voice of God and to perceive that God is even near. There needs to be a cutting away of my flesh. But I have to agree with that. I got to be willing, as painful as it may be, I got to be willing to undergo the process. Lord, I don't want to cut off this music. You know, this music has been a part of me for so long. Lord, I don't want to cut off the fashion trend. This fashion trend has been a part of me for so long. Lord, I don't want to cut off the family members. I don't want to cut off the friends. I don't want to cut off the career. I don't want to cut off living the fast life. I don't want to cut off... You know, going to these parties and these events. I don't I don't want to cut these things off. But the Lord is saying, no, you need to. You must. It's a must. It's a must that we are cut from certain things. It's a must. You know, I heard it said that, you know, this person is cut from this kind of cloth. Yeah. It depends on the person's characteristics and the person's trait that lets you know if this person was cut from a clean cloth or a unclean cloth. That just came into my mind. That just came into my mind. It needs to be said that we were cut from a clean cloth, but we have to be willing to undergo the process that's going to make us clean. No, this is going to make you clean. When that foreskin is cut off, then it's going to be more easier to clean this part. It's going to be more easier to take care of and to maintain this part. Now that the excess, the excess skin is removed, yeah, now that parts of your heart have been cut away, it's going to be more easier and more manageable for you to maintain what God is doing in your heart. The peace that God is giving you, the joy that God is giving you, the confidence that God is giving you, the love that God is giving you, the humility that God is giving you. Now that that part of you is cut and continuously being cut, because again, it's a process, then it's going to become more easier for you to maintain your emotions, to maintain your peace, to maintain, you know, Self-control is going to be more easier. It's going to be more easier because you are willing for him to cut this off. This needs to be cut off. Do you realize you and I, we picked up things. We picked up things from the world. We picked up things as a result of the lifestyle that you and I live. And those things cannot go where God is taking us. Where God was promising to take Abraham and his descendants, they could not go that way. No, I got to I gotta strip you. I have to cut away this part of your people or you know well it was god's people but i have to cut away this part of you in order for you to go where i am taking you i gotta cut this away you cannot go like this you cannot go like this you cannot go in this condition you cannot go in this state there has to be a cutting away there has to be a circumcising and so we are learning that in this season we are learning that this is what God is wanting to do with his people. He's raising up a people that is like him, but they have to listen. We have to go through this process. We have to. We have to go through the cutting off of the things of this world, the worldliness, the worldliness, the vanity, the mundane, the idolatry that has to be cut off. We've we've taken this on, we've picked this up, we've worn it, we we've supported it or we've declared it or you know we we've i'm trying to think of the word like you know this this is a part of who i am i grew up in this religion or i grew up you know serving these false gods this is this is who i am i supported it i i've i'm trying to think of the word that 
I can't think of it right now, but you know, the person supported it to the point where, you know, everyone knew that, no, this person is this, like this is their, their culture. This is their ethnic background, that that's what makes them, them. And the Lord is saying like, you got to come out of that and separate yourself. You have to be separate from your people group. That's what the Lord told Abraham, like get out from your people group, get out from your city, get out from among your kindreds, leave these people. I'm calling you leave these people. Many times the Lord won't call everyone, but he'll call that one because God allowed for Abraham's father and his brother to die in their condition. But he called Abraham. He called Abraham and he wanted to do something different. He said that it was through Abraham that he was going to bless this line. That he was going to bless this lineage. He was going to bless Abraham and his seed. No, this is the one through which I want to bless. This is the line. And it was through that same line through Isaac, through Jacob, through Judah, you know, that Jesus Christ came through the lineage of Abraham. It was through that family line that God decided to bless and that he decided to make his covenant with. God is not making covenants with everyone. God is not making promises with everyone. But those of us that God is calling, those of us that God is making covenant with and making promises with, we have to be those who are open to what God is doing. As God is drawing us closer to him, as God is bringing us closer into the promised land, we are undergoing a process. There are going to be parts where it's going to be a little bit more painful than other times, but the process is going to be good. The end result, the finished product is going to be good. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a, when when we are in our finished state and we get our glorified bodies, we're not even going to remember these days anymore. We're not even going to remember these days anymore. The more God is purging us, the more God is cutting off those bad parts of us. Because again, Jesus says that the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. He says that every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down. And every tree that does bear fruit, he purges, he cuts. I got to cut this part off of you because if I don't catch this now, then it can affect the rest of the tree. It can affect the rest of the fruit. So I got to cut this part of you. You got to be willing to undergo the process though. This is going to be for your own good. The fact that he's cutting away this part. No, this this part, this excess of fat, it needs to be cut away. This part of you right here that has a little spot, a little blemish, it has to be cut away. It has to be removed for your betterment, for your good. And as the Lord does these things, as he begins to purge us of whatever it is that we need the purging for or of, then we become a better us. We can walk upright and perfect before the Lord because we position ourselves and we agree with the process. Lord, is there another way? Lord, can we do it a, diff a different way? Can we do it like this? The Lord is saying, this is the only way. Jesus asked the Father, you know, is there another way? Is there another way, Father? And he began to realign himself and reminded himself that, you know what? It's not about me. It's not about me. He says, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I'm going to undergo this process because I know that this process is needed. I know that this is the only way and I agree with it and I accept it. And so he followed through with the process. He followed through with what God was wanting to do through him and he completed it. He finished it. That's what he said on the cross. And so the people of God, we have to finish our course as well. But in the midst of it, there's a process that you and I have to undergo, but we got to be willing. He has to cut away. He has to cut away the parts of you and I that are not like him. Wait a minute. There are parts of us that are not like God. Yes, there are parts of you and I. Again, there are things that we picked up from the world. There are things that we've learned. There are things that we were taught. There are things that have become who we are. It, sh it, it shaped us as people. It shaped us as we were growing up from our childhood, from our early youth. It has shaped us and molded us. And so now we are this and we're trying to become this. We're trying to become like, like God. We're trying to become like God. 
But in order for us to become like God, we got to undergo a process. There has to be a cutting away of mindsets. There are certain mindsets that you and I have that we got from the world. There are certain ways about us. There are parts of our personality, parts of our character that you and I got from our parents. We got from our culture. We got from the world that God has to cut off. Hey, you can't enter into my rest this way. This part of you is a blemish. This part of you is a spot. This has to be cut off. This part of you have to, has to be circumcised. Yeah. I know that you like these groups of people. You grew up with them. You know them as your family. But I want to separate you from them. Because these people, they have these kinds of idols in their hearts. These groups of people, they act these kinds of ways. They're lustful. They're drunken. Yeah, they're abusive. Yeah, they're, they're loose. Yeah, there are these kinds of ways, and I'm trying to make you like me, so there has to be a separating, there has to be a distinction. So God will call us from our families. He will call us from our places of comfort. Yeah, I know that you're so familiar with this, this area, you're familiar with these people, but in order for me to make you like me, I got to separate you from them. Why does God have to bring a, a separation Jesus says, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have to divide you. I have to separate you. If I'm going to make you one of my sheep, then I have to separate you from the goats. I have to make a distinction. And in order for you to be my sheep, you have to know my voice. You have to learn of me. You got to be like me. And so you got to undergo a process. I know the process is going to be painful, but you're going to thank me for it. You're going to be glad that you went through this. You're going to be glad that there was a circumcising. God, I thank you for the circumcising. I thank you for removing the excess foreskin of my heart. You and I, we need God to do this. We should want God to do this. God, I want to go through this process because I know that I am like those that came before me. I know that I am like those, you know, in my family line. And I don't, I don't want to be that way because those individuals, they're, they're full of hatred. They hate God. They're full of unbelief. They're full of rebellion and pride. I don't, I don't want to be those ways. This is what God is wanting to deliver you and I from. He's trying to set us free. He's trying to break off generational curses, but he has to remove some things. He has to cut it off. That's painful. That's painful. It's not going to always feel good. Separation is not always fun, but it's worth it. In order for him to elevate you, he has to separate you because elevation requires separation. He has to separate you from those things that identified the old you but those things are no longer you because you're a new creature you're born again and then it requires a separation with the things that you have attached to your heart no this thing has your heart jesus says where your treasures are that's where your heart is there are things in our heart that we have put in the place of god right so god is the only person that's supposed to have place on our hearts but we've put other things in his place on our hearts and we have to separate from those things because if we choose not to, then we're telling God that this is our God. We're telling God that this is our treasures. This, this is what I want to hold on to. This gives me a sense of comfort. This gives me a sense of security. So I, I, I like the things that are in my heart. Although the things are bad, I like what's in my heart because it's a part of me. It's a part of me. And that's the part that God is saying needs to be cut away, needs to be cut off. If you don't cut these things off, if it's, it's so important to you and it matters so much to you that you can't let it go, God, I can't let this thing go, then he'll just have to let you go. God is wanting for us to cut these things off so that he can give us more, so he can give us more, so that he can fill us with more, so that he can actually begin to expand our hearts. No, just give me what's in your hand so that I can give you what I have for you. When we choose to not let go of X, Y, and Z, then what we're telling God is that we like it. We like whatever bondage this brings. We like whatever strongholds this brings. We, we like whatever demons that comes along with it. Because, you know, there are people who like demons because it brings them comfort. No, I talk to my devils. They bring me a sense of comfort. That's all I've ever known. So some people like certain bondages because it does bring a sense of comfort and security and pleasure to whatever degree it does that. But the Lord is saying, you got to separate from that. That's idolatrous. You have to separate from that. That's not of me. That's not of me. That is of the devil. That's not of me. So we have to be among those that are 
saying, you know, Lord, I'm willing. God, I'm open. God, I'm available. God, I want what you want. No matter how painful it's going to be, Lord, get me through it. God, get me through it. I know that me holding on to this is causing me to be separate from you. I know me engaging this is causing for me to be distant from you. We got to decide either it's God or it's it's the mundane. It's the temporary. It's the vanity. We have to decide what's more important to us. Every every person on the face of the planet will get to decide what's more important to them, where their heart is. Where's your heart? What has your heart? Does God have your heart or does family have your heart? Because that seems to be one of the most challenging things is family. Family. Most people don't want to talk about that. Most pastors won't talk about that. They won't talk about that part of the Bible because of the offense that it causes. That That's offensive to talk about family. Don't bring that up. People need their families. Listen, God told Abraham, leave your family. Leave their, their idolaters. Leave them. But that's messed up. I know it is. That's why I'm not calling everybody. That's why I'm calling him. I'm calling the one that, have, that has the ears to hear. Jesus says, I come to bring a sword. I'm not here to bring peace and, and to make folks be married. No, I'm, I'm recreating a new family. I'm starting something new. This is this is something that has never been done before. I'm doing something new. He's recreating the family and what he identifies as family. He says, those who do the will of my father, the same is my mother and my brother and my sister. Those are my family. Those are your family. Those who do the will of my father. So me separating you is for your own good. Me cutting off the excessive skin, the foreskin, that's for your own good. Me circumcising your heart, that's going to be good for you. You're going to begin to feel the difference. You're going to feel the change. You're going to feel the freedom. You're going to feel the grace to be like God. Now you're going to feel the grace to walk in holiness. You're going to feel the grace to walk in righteousness because that's what he makes available. That's what he does. This is what he gives. He gives more power. He gives more, more power and more grace to those that don't resist him. Those who submit to him, those who humble themselves before him, he's going to give them more power to be like him. They're going, to be, they're going to be given power to be the sons of God. He's going to do that for them. Yeah, because this person has undergone a process of being circumcised. Yeah, cutting it off. You got to cut it off. If it offends you, if it gets in the way between you and God, you got to cut it off. If it takes the place of God in your life, you got to cut it off. If it's money, if you say you love money, you know, money buys you things. Money answers all things like the word of God says. If it's money that has become your God and become your idol, you got to be willing to cut that off. If it's the music, if it's the songs, if it's the TV shows, the reality shows, the sitcoms, whatever it is. If it's friends and family, once again, if it's career, if you feel as though, man, if I don't get this career, then my life is not going to be on track. If I don't go to this college, if I don't start this business, if I don't get married to this person over here, although they're Muslim, although they're Buddhist, although they're black, Hebrew, Israelite, if I don't marry them, then I don't feel like my life is going to be on track. And God is saying, submit to me. God is saying, let me cut that off of you. Let me cut this part off of you because you think these kinds of ways, you think that these things are okay. You have these kinds of beliefs. What do you think God had to do with Abraham? That circumcising wasn't just of his physical foreskin. That was of his heart. That was of his heart. He had to change Abraham's way of thinking. He had to change Abraham's belief. You think I'm a liar. You think me, God, you think that I'm a liar. You think that I'm not good. That's why you don't think that I'm going to do this promise. That's why you don't think that I'm going to fulfill what I said in my word. Yeah. There were certain mindsets that Abraham still walked in that he got from his people group that the Lord had to deliver him of. The circumcising of his heart and his mind, God had to do with him. Yeah, because you think this way. We think these kinds of ways. We don't believe that God is good. We don't believe that God is faithful. We don't believe that God is going to fulfill his promises in our own lives. I don't believe that God wants to even do it. You know, many times we doubt. We doubt. We, we doubt that God wants to do anything for us. And that's what keeps us back from Seeing the promises of God manifested in our lives is our unbelief, our doubt, our past experience, self-condemnation, fear, pride, stubbornness, rebellion. The list goes on. The list goes on. Failure. The fact that other people in our lives who we respected, you know, they fell. They fell. And so we look at God that same way as we look at man. We look at God the same way as we look at man as, you know, 
No, you're going to fail me. You're not going to come through. You're not going to follow through. You're not going to keep your word. You're not going to keep your end of the bargain or the covenant. We look at God that same way and we are fighting against that sinful part of us that says that God is not good. We're fighting unbelief. We're fighting unbelief. We're fighting the thoughts that says God is a liar, that says God is not going to do it, that he doesn't want to do it. We're fighting that. We're fighting that. And as we're overcoming, as we are allowing God to do this open heart surgery, our heart is now being shaped perfectly. Our heart can now be molded. Our heart can now be crafted in the right way. And he can add some expansion on there. And as he begins to expand your heart, he can put more in your heart. God can do more in your heart now that there has been a cutting away. Now, I couldn't do anything right then and there because you had too much in your heart. You had too much in your heart. You know, when they do open heart surgery, they have to remove everything first before they come. You know, complete the work. We got to remove everything. We have to remove the infection. We have to remove the problem first before we can do any work, any clean work. We got to remove everything. And when they do, they sterilize the heart. They sterilize the heart and then they put everything back together. Before God can do anything in your heart, He has to remove the infection. He has to remove that part of your heart that is keeping Him back. That's keeping him back. That's keeping him out. I got to do an open heart surgery. It's going to be painful, but you're going to be better in the end. You're going to thank me. You're going to be glad that I cut that part away because this part, you holding on to this part would have kept you in the same state. You don't even know. It would have kept you in your same condition. Yeah. You don't even know the amount of freedom that you've been given simply because you allow God to cut that off. You allow God to cut that part off. And now you're walking in a measure of freedom you didn't even know was available. Had you held on to this, you would have still been dealing with that bondage over there. You would have still been dealing with that over there. You don't even know. You don't even know. Yeah, you got, he has to remove the infection. He has to remove the part that's affecting the whole body. That's the purpose of him purging the tree. When Jesus says every tree that does bear good fruit has to be purged. I know you're, you're bearing good fruit, but there are still parts of you that needs purging it's a daily process. That's the Christian's life. We're going to ever be going through a purging process. The more we become like God, he's perfecting us. He's making us perfect. He's making us like him. He's making us to be a people without spots and without blemish. But those blemishes, those spots, they have to be dealt with. They can't be overlooked because then it can affect the whole tree. Yeah, that part of the heart that's infected, if that doesn't get dealt with, that's going to affect the whole heart. You know, you would rather... You know, you get a piece of the heart removed rather than the whole heart be damaged, rather than the whole heart be affected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we want God to do the circumcising. We have to be willing to cut whatever it is off. What is it that needs to be cut off? What is it that you're holding on to? What is it that is keeping you back from God? What is it that you are allowing to keep you back from God? Because if you are allowing it to keep you back from God, then what you are agreeing to is it allowing you to keep you from eternity as well. That's what you're saying. If you are agreeing to the things that are holding you back, if it's relationship, if it's a boyfriend, if it's a girlfriend, if it's family, you got to decide what's more important. Where, what's your God and where is your heart? What has your heart? What is your God? You have to decide. You have to decide. And then time is going to tell. Time is going to tell. So God bless you. That is all the time that I have right now. I pray that the spirit of God does give you a heart that is open and available. Ears to hear and eyes to see in Jesus name.